Guys, I've been thinking. It's been living rent-free in my head since it happened. I don't know if there is a worse single game loss in NBA history than the Phoenix Suns game seven against the Dallas Mavericks last year in the 2022 Western Conference semifinals. 64 win regular season, most embarrassing, demoralizing, devastating, catastrophic, embarrassing, humiliating, piece of shit game anybody has ever played. Expectations were not approached. It was disgusting. It was an insult to the sport of basketball. It was an insult to the concept of competition. What the hell were these guys thinking? Now, of course there had to be something going on. Like, you know these guys before they walked onto the floor that day. Do you think they knew? Do you think they knew what was about to happen? I think some guys had a feeling. But I'm making this video because something fucking weird is going on. It's not a coincidence that after that happens, Jay Crowder, your team's starting four, he just won't play for your team anymore. He's out of there. They're gonna find a trade for him. A lot of teams want a guy like that. And Jay Crowder, yeah, he's 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 not the best version of himself at this point. This guy will go seven to seven from three and then brick the next 25. We've all seen it. And he'll fall down on every single one of them. But Jay Crowder is the type of guy that you want on a good team. I mean, there's a reason why he's been in the finals two of the last three years. His record over the last three years in games that he's played in is insane. And it's not just because of him, obviously. He's not a powerhouse player. He's a role player, but he's a high-end role player. A guy that starts on a really, really good team. He's like the fifth guy in your starting lineup. Toughness, contagious attitude, he brings a fire. And even if he's not hitting shots, he's still going to annoy the other team. He's still gonna contribute in rebounding, probably make some heady plays, definitely guard up, be physical. Playoff type player, a lot of experience, a lot of hunger. He wants to help a locker room. So he knows something's up with this. It might be an ego thing. Maybe he's just not slated to be the starter. Maybe they like Cam Johnson more than him, and that's why he's mad. I don't think it's quite exactly a coincidence that Jay Crowder is pissed and he's out of there. And DeAndre Ayton, I mean, he isn't exactly thrilled about being there either. The Phoenix Suns, despite being in conversations that they would be moving off of their number one overall pick from 2018, they end up matching this offer sheet from the Indiana Pacers in minutes. Like, it was a done deal. They knew exactly what they were going to do. I thought it was a little bit weird. Clearly, there is some tension and some friction here, and... Bonnie Williams and this guy don't like each other. Him and Chris Paul probably don't have the best relationship. You know Chris Paul can have an abrasive leadership style, but in some of these big games like Game 7, nowhere to be found. Chris Paul, Monty Williams surely have a good relationship. These old guys yelling at DeAndre Ayton all the time. DeAndre Ayton averaged 18 and 10 last year. He had a really good season, but he gets a little bit overshadowed. Looking at the fact that he was picked first overall ahead of guys like Luka Doncic and Trey Young, a lot of people would think that that's a giant misstep by the Suns. Of course, it probably is. But the Suns haven't really put him in a position to be that number one guy. He's been very serviceable, played his role extremely well, but they just don't go to him that much as an offensive player or creator down low. And one of the most bizarre things about that playoff series against Dallas is just a lack of touches you give a big guy like Ayton against a team like the Mavericks with no real big men at all. I mean, Dwight Powell, Maxi Kleber are guarding this guy, and they don't even want to look for him. What the hell is that about? DA only played 17 minutes tonight, yep. and so he didn't play most of the fourth quarter. Is there any reason why is he hurt? Or it's internal. Reason? Monty Williams is an acclaimed coach in this league. I mean, he has the ultimate, utmost respect from his peers, from his players, coach of the year. I don't really know what you can say to him. If DeAndre Ayton wants more touches, do you think there's a way he can do that? Do you think he's going to step up to Chris Paul, step up to Monty Williams and say, I need the ball more? Chris Paul's like, man, I've been in this league 10,000 years. I've played fucking a million minutes on a basketball court. You're going to tell me how to run my offense? When the Phoenix Suns were stuck in NBA hell for over a decade and couldn't scrape the playoffs. And all of a sudden my first year and we're in the NBA finals. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes here but clearly the environment is not one that's going to be championship ready. Listen, I don't know what Monty Williams is talking about. I haven't talked to a lot of guys. DeAndre Ayton didn't look very excited about that. This guy, oh yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. What was your initial reaction once the Suns matched the pace was off? I was happy. It was all done, I guess. That's it? Yep. Okay. This could be some really bad news. The expectations are sky high. Teams are probably a lot more confident going into this team's building or just playing against the Phoenix Suns, knowing what happened to them, how you can guard a team like that. Devin Booker is going to have a lot of pressure on his shoulders this year to be a creator. I don't know what more Chris Paul has to offer. Since turning 37, he was an absolute shell of himself in the playoffs. Yeah, I know he's, he's, he's hurt every time he's something. There's a magic button as soon as he gets into a tough round of the playoffs. Boom, injury. I don't know. A lot of people were saying, oh, yeah, he wasn't right. He's never right in the playoffs. Maybe it wasn't that smart that I took the over on the Suns win this year. 
before all this shit started happening, I was just thinking, this team is a well-oiled machine. Regular season juggernaut, 64 wins, they know exactly what it takes going in and out of buildings, beating up on all the teams they should beat, executing down the stretch. I find it hard to believe that a Chris Paul-led team that went to the finals and then won 64 games is going to drop below 50 wins with the same team. That was my thinking. That was my line of thinking in making that bet. And it really depends what they can get for Jay Crowder. I don't know. Maybe he'll change his mind and say, you know, we'll run it back. But clearly he's not happy with something that's going on. I don't know if it's the fact that he's kind of being demoted in the depth chart and not a starter anymore allegedly, because they want to showcase Cam Johnson more as a starter, as he is probably a starting caliber player in the NBA, even on a very good team like the Phoenix Suns, but something tells me this team is not recovered. Something tells me that that loss isn't going to be forgotten this year, and it might not allow the Suns to be that well-oiled machine that they were last year. I'm sure they've been in the gym. I'm sure they've been working hard. Chris Paul and Devin Booker know what they have to do and what it takes to win a lot of games in the regular season, and I'm sure they will win a lot of games. If they're not a top five seed, I would be shocked. That is, if they stay healthy. DeAndre Ayton, this is a guy that is understanding of the level of expectations that are on him as a player. Being a number one overall pick, he's a really skilled player. He has a lot of strengths on both ends of the court that the Suns, I feel like, don't do as good of a job or didn't do as good of a job of utilizing in the NBA playoffs as they could have. But he has got to be a focal point for them during this year. They got to run a lot of plays through him. They got to treat him like a third star in their offense. Because if Devin Booker and Chris Paul are your only guys running the show, it's going to be a fucking problem. Not just because that's not enough, but also because you got to keep this guy happy. This guy, I know he just gets yelled at all the time. I know Chris Paul and Monty Williams are in his ear all the time in the season telling him where he's fucking up, telling him where he's got to be better, just yelling at him what to do, and maybe saying good job when he does it. But how is a guy like this going to ask for an expanded role? How is he going to convince a Chris Paul or Monty Williams, that he needs touches. Give him the ball on the pick and fade. Give him the ball in a face-up situation. Let him go to work. He's got a small guy on him. Get him in the low post. Why is he not a focal point in the offense? And who's going to tell them that he needs to be? Because you're not going to win a championship if he's not. If you think you're going to win a championship, you have two guys you're going to create your whole offense, and they couldn't even fucking do that against the Dallas Mavericks, a team without a center. Well, let me just say this. A lot has to change in this month. They're going to do as much as they can to get this culture turned around on an incline so that whatever, game seven of last year is not a problem for them. I have a feeling it's going to haunt them. I don't think a loss like that just fades away. I mean, that is a career-defining, franchise-defining loss, potentially. If they can't capitalize on what they have on this talent all in the same place, I don't know how long Chris Paul is going to be playing basketball at this level. I'm sure that he can get his team a lot of wins if he's playing in the regular season, but... I'm definitely going to be tuned into what's going on, what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing. This guy looks devastated. I mean, he just fu looks fucking pissed, depressed. I don't know. He said, I'm happy. Not a trace of a smile. Everybody at Media Day on all these teams, man, they're so excited. The vibes are great. We got a new, fresh new team. There's always so much optimism for everybody going into a new season because everybody's so excited to showcase what they can do with another chance, another year under their belt, another opportunity to get better. These guys are so happy to be back. And then you got this guy. <laughs> Look away, Suns fans. Anyway, that's going to do it. DeAndre Ayton in the sunken place. Something, 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 something's got to happen.